Hello, my name is Alex. Welcome to Monster Movie Monday Madness, a show where I suggest horror movies to you. First up for the night, we have Wishmaster 2, or as I like to call it, the Jin is at it again. Once again, the Jin, as he's referred to, is released from his imprisonment and goes on a fun romp around a prison, granting wishes and causing death. Directed by Jack Shoulder, who's also responsible for Nightmare on Street 2, this film plays on the be careful what you wish for motif and comes up with a lot of really fun deaths along the way. Holly Fields plays our main female hero and Andrew Dyboff? Dyboff? Divoff? Plays the genie. Dyboff or Andrew is really good at doing a Jack Nicholson stare. Dude looks really creepy. He's looking at you, not me. Anyway, if you're a fan of any of the other Wishmasters, or you're a fan of the Leprechaun series, then check this out. You'll have a lot of fun with Wishmaster 2. Our next movie comes from the Golden Age in sci-fi. And yes, by the Golden Age, I mean the 1950s. 1957's Attack of the Crab Monsters will leave you screaming. Well, maybe not screaming. Unless you had a traumatic experience with crabs. Attack of the Crab Monsters tells the tale of a group of scientists, including stars Richard Garland and Pamela Duncan, who have the genius idea of researching nuclear weaponry. I mean, what else are you going to do in the 50s, right? They get stranded on a deserted island, infested with giant brain-eating crab monsters, and if that weren't enough plot for you, the island is slowly sinking into the ocean. Director Roger Corman, who is also responsible for the Vincent Price versions of The Raven and The Pit and the Pendulum, brings these giant crab monsters to cheesy life. If you're a fan of either The Pit and the Pendulum or The Raven, or such classics as uh, Day the Earth Stood Still or Them, then Attack of the Crab Monsters will make your Monday all the cheesier. The final movie of the night is the work of modern horror writer Clive Barker, and not intentionally another sequel, Hellbound. Hellraiser 2. It's a funhouse ride that sits as a prime example of how great practical effects were in the 80s. And it's also a prime example of how awful the visual effects were in the 80s. This film picks up right where the first one left off, so it is recommended to watch the first Hellraiser first. Obviously. We once again follow Ashley Lawrence's character Kirsty as she tries to save her father from the depths of hell, all while of trying to avoid the deadly Cenobites. If you're a fan of such classics as the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, Poltergeist, or Brad Pitt's performance in Interview with a Vampire, then you won't mind the leisurely stroll through hell that is Hellbound Hellraiser 2. Well, that's all for me tonight. Please enjoy the movies. Uh, leave a comment discussing what you think of them. Maybe anything that you'd like for me to talk about in the future. Uh, jump on over to our Facebook and our Twitter account. Give us a like. Give us a follow, I guess is what you call it. Tweet about us. Spread the word. Uh, share it. Subscribe. Please subscribe. Our first show starts on Monday, June 16th. It's Oh the Horror. Please, we hope to see you there.